Windows 11 Preview is out and we've got our hands on it and we're excited to show it to you. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Mike at IT Pro TV, and we're getting ready to take our first look at that Windows 11 interface. Now before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel right down below there so you don't miss out on this or any of the other exciting videos we've got coming your way. And if you want to take a sneak peek at Windows 11 with me, make sure you watch our other video in the YouTube library that talks about how to join that Windows Insider program. All right, with that being said, let's take a look at Windows 11. All right, there you go. The first thing you're gonna notice is it's it's pretty, right? It's really crisp, it's really clean. Uh, that is one of the things that they talked about with the design of Windows 11. It's just the feel that you get. It's very, very comfortable, all right? Now there's, a, there's gonna be some differences, some things that it's gonna take some getting used to as with any change. But let's look and see what we got. The first thing we'll notice is that my start menu is in the middle of the screen, right? There's my little start button right there, my Windows logo, and then there's the rest of my taskbar buttons. They're centered. They're no longer on that left-hand side like they've been since Windows has been around, right? It's been over there for a long time. If that bothers you, don't worry. I'm gonna show you how to move it back over there so you can get back to your old left cornered or left justified uh, start menu. But let's explore. Let's see what we've got before we start making changes, right? And this is something I recommend you do. Try it, right? Like get in there and play around with it. Watch that video, join the Insider program uh, and, and try to get used to it before you just try to change it back to Windows 10. All right, so let's take a look from that start menu. You'll, you'll see it's very different, right? One of the things that we've lost are those live tiles. We had those tiles that we could pin to our task, our start menu, and it would show me current news information, stock tickers, photos, emails, calendars, things like that. They've simplified that, and that's because we have something else that takes that place or fills that void. So our start menu itself is a lot cleaner. You have pinned apps across the top. All right, now this is a pretty default install, so I don't have a lot going on, but these are my pinned applications, applications that I use a lot, and I can launch them simply by clicking on them. But if I, if I right click on one of these, notice I don't have the option to resize it or anything with live tiles, All right? We have move up and unpin from the start, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Now this is not all the apps that I have installed. I do have the option to click on all apps right up there at the top, and here I can get that familiar list of all of the applications that exist on my machine. And if one of them, if I use, let's say video editor, I use that a lot. I can simply right click on it and choose pin to start. And now I wanna go back to the original screen. There's video editor right there, pinned, all right? Now, as you add more and more, notice there's only room for about three rows of icons you'll end up to where you can scroll down through them. And when you add a new one, it'll be at the bottom. So if it's one that you wanna see at the top, you can simply right click on it and you can choose move to top right there. All right, and that'll bump it up from the bottom of the list all the way up to the top. You can also click and drag to rearrange them so that the icons make sense for you. Oops, I didn't mean to launch that. Let's uh, cancel out of that mail there. We don't want that. Go back over to our start menu. So you're free to rearrange them and organize them, whatever works for you. All right, so that's our start menu. Um, log in, log out options are still right below my user's icon right there. Uh, and then my power options over here on the far right hand side for disconnect or shut down or restart your machine. As we move along the taskbar, the next one is gonna be the search. This really hasn't changed a whole lot from Windows 10. Um, you have the search bar across the top. You have the ability to uh, choose what you're searching for. If you know it's an application or a document, or if you wanna search everything for a particular word, uh, you can do that. The next one over, however, is pretty cool. Let me get rid of my search there. This one is known as my task view. And this is where we get into the desktops, right? Having multiple virtual desktops. We've done other videos on that topic, so make sure you check them out. But if you're a fan of them like me, they've really streamlined the whole interface. You notice by just hovering over that little icon, I get a little peek as to what those other desktops are going to include. You can see them right across here, as well as the ability to create a new virtual desktop. And remember, I can have different desktops with different applications open on them, and then I can use my control windows key left and right arrow to flip back and forth between those desktops. If I actually click on the icon, now I get full size thumbnails of each one of those desktops. And just to remember, to remind you, I'm gonna to go to desktop number two, I'm gonna open up File Explorer, and then I'm gonna flip back over to desktop one. 
All right, so there you get the idea. You can see my two different desktops. One could have all my work applications. Another one has my personal applications or my social media or whatever the case may be. And then I can use my arrow keys to flip back and forth between those guys. All right, but a much more streamlined, much simpler interface uh, than what we're used to with Windows 10. So I really like that. All right, next one, I want to take a look at the widgets. So the next icon over, right, that little blue guy down there, if I can highlight that for you. That's for my widgets. And I'm going to click on that. And this is what they call a pane of glass, right? It slides out over there from that left-hand side. And these are widgets. Now, we had widgets way back in Windows Vista. They worked a little bit. Some people didn't like them. They took up a lot of resources. Much more refined process now. Um, and the idea is that I have a little bit of control over what widgets are, are installed. This is where my live tiles kind of shifted to, right? You can see things like weather. Uh, I've got my stock ticker going, I think it's of sports. Uh, it looks like a picture of good old Don Pazette in my photos bucket uh, on this machine here. And right towards the bottom of that, well, let me scroll down first. You'll get news, and the news is curated to you. It depends on what your interests are. I'll show you how to change that. Um, to add additional widgets, you're going to click the Add Widgets button right here. All right. I'll click add and you'll see it's kind of limited currently and they're going to be adding more. I'm sure uh, I can see which ones are already added and I can choose to add say traffic or uh, esports, which I didn't realize that was such a big topic to warrant its own category, but we have esports, to-do list, calendar, right? And if I click on one of these, it'll simply add that widget out to my, and you can kind of see it in the background down there. We'll take a peek in just a minute. But before I go take a look at that, one more thing I want to show you here. Notice that I am signed in right up here, all right? You need to make sure your Microsoft account or you're signed in with your Microsoft account because the curation, the ability to show you news stories is based on your account, news stories that you're relating to or you wanna see. So when you click on this link here, manage your news and interest. This is how you can control what you're seeing on the, that news feed, right? What, app, what, what news articles are showing up, all right? When you come to this screen, make sure you're logged in. I've seen more than once where this wasn't signed in. And so you'll go through and you'll pick all the things you want to show up on your newsfeed and it won't remember it because you're not signed in. So make sure when you click on that link and it comes to this page that you're still signed in. And then you can simply add, I want to do science and I want to do technology, right? I want to add those to my interest. And now those types of articles will start showing up on my newsfeed. All right, so really cool. That is the widgets. And again, it, let me close that. And now you can see that weather app there. And most of these are clickable, All right? So if I want to go into it, I can take me out to full-blown maps. I can get my directions, whatever it is I need to do. All right, next to that, uh, File Explorer. I'm just going to open this up real quick. I know most of us are familiar with File Explorer if you use Windows, but I want you to pay attention. Look how nice it looks, right? All of the icons are updated. I don't feel like I'm still running uh, Windows XP. Great operating system, but it is nice to have some updated icons. All of my corners are rounded, much softer, more comfortable feel. All right, next I want to show you some settings, some other things that we can take a look at. So I'm going to click on my Windows logo here. And one of my icons is for my settings, right? Basically, think control panel. It's where you can get into those settings to change your machine. Uh, and you'll notice, first off, it's, it's a much different layout. And that's really what you're going to see throughout Windows 11, is this is designed to run on multiple platforms, whether you've got a laptop, a desktop, a tablet, um, an Xbox, right? And those different devices, we use different things to navigate around. On my laptop, I love my mouse or my touchpad. On my Xbox, I've got a controller in my hand, right? On my tablet, I'm using my finger. So everything is really designed to be easy to navigate no matter what device you're using. So uh, it's, it's really, it's got a really nice feel to it, right? And I can click on, uh, let's go to personalization, for example, right? Uh, and I can see these different options, background, colors, themes, lock screen. And if you click on one of those, it takes you into a little more details of what you can do. And take a look at this. I love this. I don't know why. When you change your theme, look at that. Not only did I change my theme, but I also changed between light mode and dark mode. And they've done a really good job of refining dark mode. I'm a huge fan of dark mode. Uh, and I do a lot of computing in low light scenarios. I don't need that bright light. And they've made sure that my fonts change, right? When you go to dark mode, that black font doesn't show up very well. Right? So let's switch that to white or something a little higher contrast. I think they've done a fantastic job uh, of updating what's included with that dark 
theme. So that was underneath personalization. One more thing I want to show you, and then we'll, we'll wrap this one up. Like I said, this is just a first look. We'll take a much deeper dive into each one of these features in upcoming videos. But I told you I'd show you how to move that start button over to the far left-hand side so we can get that old feel. Let's take a look at that. Uh, I am going to, there's actually a way you can get there from here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, everything is kind of moved around now. There's taskbar. So underneath personalization, I'm going to go to taskbar. And then here, we're going to go to taskbar behaviors right down here. Right, and then right over here, you'll see taskbar alignment. It's currently set to center. Simply going to hit that and choose left. I'll close that way so we can get that full look. And there you go, your start menu is now back over on the left-hand side where it is a little more familiar. So there you go, a quick look at some of those high-level features or those, those really cool things that are gonna make Windows 11 stand out from Windows 10. Hope you enjoyed this one. And like I said, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're gonna be putting out a lot more videos as new features are rolled out with that Windows 11 preview build. So stay tuned and I'll see you soon.